Hi, I'm Arjun Nakajima. We are working on TE IO support, trusted execution environment IO, where we can assign a device or device interface to a trusted VMs. Today, we are presenting device attestation for confidential computing. This is the first step for the TE IO. As I'll explain later, today direct, uh, direct I.O. is not available for hardware-based TEVMs, for example, TDX VM. And I'll cover the first part, what the introduction, and Joanne will cover most of the presentation. This is just the disclaimers and um, first I'll talk about IO virtualization in a virtualization based trusted execution environment, T, showing the types of uh, configurations and then use cases. I'll also talk about overview of the architecture for trusted VM with a TEIO to show the how the device attestation is positioned in a big picture. I have a presentation tomorrow to talk about more details of the architecture and then implementations. So this table shows how physical devices are used in a T, T environment. The first one is uh, um, trusted device. Obviously, such a device is not included in a TCP of a trusted VM. We cannot use that device assigned, directly assigned to the, the uh, guest. And I'll talk about more details later. The second one is uh, the trusted, second one, uh, trusted uh, device but still we need to use a uh, sort of bounce buffer I'll talk about the details more uh, so let's go into the more details on the next page oh before that uh, currently we have only one uh, we are seeing some uh, use cases of a two but we haven't seen a, a three yet oh. So this is the first one, untrusted device, and that, uh, that device is not visible to the trusted VM. Instead, guests will see a synthetic device, such as Vertio. And in that case, uh, we, we cannot use that uh, low data, uh, and then the data needs to uh, go to the shared memory or unprotected memory, memory. So we need to copy, the T TVM need to copy out or copy in the data and then device needs to do DMA against the shared memory. And then device will see only encrypted data. To protect the data, the TBM needs to encrypt or decrypt the data when do the I.O. So in this case, no direct I.O. And uh, notice uh, there are two sides of a uh, overhead. One is copy in, copy out the data like this. And then encryption, decryption to protect the data or integrity of the data. And this model works when the device doesn't consume the data for computation. For example, like a network or storage, we can send a encrypted the data to a network, like a TLS, TLS or the encrypted volume 
we just uh, um, create uh, encrypted blocks, right? So this case uh, is the, actually the the most common the common case of the uh, use cases today. Next one is the direct I/O assignment. So let's say if we can, the TBM can uh, trust the device in some way, then assign the device to TBM. However, uh, if that the, if that the device doesn't share the key then it cannot do direct I.O. to the TBM even if the device and then TBM share the key for the encryption decryption if the underlying data link is not trusted then the TBM still needs to use the shared memory like the uh, type 1 and then also um, IOMMU and then uh, MMIO is, is, are still managed by the VMM so if uh, VMM is not trusted uh, there are some uh, risks for the TBM for example MMIO is used for the TBM to access device interface registers such as uh, command registers of the device and it's possible that the VMM can set up a uh, mapping to a wrong device for example so there are such uh, cases are there as long as that the VMM is not uh, trusted. Now this is uh, the summary of uh, physical devices in, in T T environment. As we saw, the first two both require bounce buffer, where the TBM needs to copy in, copy out combined with the encryption the first case VMM itself uh, sorry the TVM itself needs to decrypt and encrypt the data for the uh, protection of the data second case device also needs to do that uh, second the difference between the first and the second one is the second one, the device needs to consume the data for the computation. For example, GPU or FPGA, they need to consume the data. And if the data is encrypted, then it also needs to, the device also needs to encrypt the de de decrypt. Okay. So, to minimize such overhead, we, we need to have direct assignment of a TEIO device. So that's the, the, our goal. So next, uh, I'll talk about how we can do that. Okay, so this is uh, the new uh, spec called the TDISP Trusted Device Interface Security Protocol This is the architecture defined by the TDISP I'm not going to talk about the details of uh, this architecture because uh, I'll presenting this in details tomorrow uh, like as I said but I just uh, uh, look, explain uh, the minimal part of this one uh, for this presentation. One important uh, entity in this picture 
is TSM. TSM is a T security manager. It's a logical entity and it's trusted. It's a part of a TCB of the all TVMs. Okay. And then on the device side, this is a device, single device. If you look at the, this device, we have physical function. TDI is uh, the device interface, TEE device interface. And it has a state that's defined by the TDISP. Also, on the device side, there is a, a logical entity which is device security manager and TSM and DSM uh, communicate each other using secure channel. So the challenge for the trusted device is how that communication, especially the TSM and then DSM, can communicate in a secure fashion. Another question is how TE trust the device. And Joanne will talking about more details on the on those uh, subject. Let's see how the device attestation work in a confidential computing environment. As Joe mentioned before, we have two challenges need to resolve. The first one is that how the TE communicates with the device to get the device information. Since the TE is known as a TVM, it runs on top of VMM. The VMM may hijack the, any communication between the TVM and the device. As such, we need to establish a authenticated secure session between the TVM and the device. Here is a TE device communication model. There are two types of communication channels between the TE and the device. The first one is the management channel. Usually it is a software based. You can see that in the middle of the picture, there's a big yellow arrow between TSM and the DSM. The TSM and the DSM may use SPDM as a communication protocol. The SPDM protocol is standardized by the DMTF organization. It stands for Secure Protocol and Data Model. You can treat the SPDM protocol to be a lightweight network TLS. It supports secure communication between two endpoint devices on one platform. By using SPDM, the host TSM can get the device certificate and the device measurement in a secure manner. The TSM can set up an authenticated secure session with the DSM. Based upon that use case, it can be either one-way authentication or mutual authentication. The SPDM protocol is a transport layer similar to the TLS it allows application protocol using SPDM secure session. The second usage of the management channel is to negotiate the data communication encryption key. The keys can be transferred by using SPDM application between the TSM and the DSM. In the TEIO device use case, the PCSE standardized the IDE key management protocol. The IDE KM is secured by the SPTM session. The TSM and the DSM need to negotiate the IDE stream encryption key and set the key to the hardware for data transfer. In a TE device use case, the device driver in a TVM may negotiate the software data encryption key with the device in SPDM session. The software data the encryption key can be used to encrypt or decrypt the data 
in the bounce buffer. And you can see that in the bottom of the picture, there's a big yellow array between the host CPU SOC and device hardware. And that is a hardware ID session. The third usage as a management channel is a TDI interface management. The PCI-SIG defined a TDISP protocol to allow the host TVM and the VMM manage the device interface. For example, the VMM may assign one or more specific device TDI to one TVM. Then the VMM need to lock the device configuration. The TVM need to send the TDSP start interface command to allow the device to perform DMA access, etc. This is shown on the top of the picture. TDR1 is assigned to TVM1, while TDI2 is assigned to TVM2. So John will discuss that topic tomorrow. Once this management channel work is done, the TVM and the device can transfer the confidential data via data channel. In the TEIO device use case, the standard PCI IDE stream can be used to protect the data communication via hardware DMA. While in the TE device use case, the data in the bounce buffer can be encrypted by using the key negotiated in above steps. The second challenge is that how a TE trusts the device. First, the TVM verifies the physical device identity and the device version. The identity is usually presented as a device X.59 certificate chain. The device version can be presented as a device firmware measurement or secure version, secure version number SVM. Those information is static info. The verifier should have some golden value as policy and manifest. To compare with the data from the device with a manifest according to the policy. This step is also known as device attestation. Second, the TE need to verify the device interface information. For example, the interface capability and the configuration. Some of them is the device dynamic data configured by the VMM, uh, such as the MMIO address. As such, there's no golden, golden values. The device driver need to perform some check. Uh, this figure shows a typical attestation architecture. The TSM acts as a attester. It uses SPDM protocol to collect the device certificate chain and the measurement from the device DSM with security guarantee. The TSM only verifies the integrity of the information. For example, every certificate chain, in, uh, every certificate in the certificate chain should be signed correctly by the previous cert to the self-signed root cert. And the leaf certificate is used to verify the digital signature from the device in a secure session establishment. The measurement data is also transferred in a secure session. However, the TSM does not know the policy. As such, the TSM do not know which cert or measurement is acceptable or not. Later, TSM presents the device certificate and the measurement information to the TVM uh, so as the evidence for the device. Then the TVM can perform some local attestation. The TVM collect the endorsement from the endorser, for example, the device root cert. The TVM collect the expected golden value as the reference integrity manifest, RIM, from the device manufacturer. Then the TVM use a defined policy to check the device certificate chain and the device measurement. The policy could be very strict. For example, one, only one specific device measurement from the device can be accepted, such as the latest one published by the device vendor. Or the policy could be flexible. For example, the TVM can accept uh, a specific device secure version number, SVN, as long as the device 
has this SVN, any other firmware measurement can be accepted. Or the policy could be a partial match. For example, the device may provide different me measurement for code and configuration. The policy can say, as long as the measurement for the code matches, the device is accepted. The device measurement for the configuration can be ignored. All in all, to define the policy is out of scope of any standard as far as we know. The tenant owner can make a, a, their own decision. Besides local attestation, the TVM may, perform, may support remote attestation for the device. In this case, the verifier is from remote. The TVM needs to record all data, such as device evidence, verification policy, RIM, and endorsement to the TVM measurement register and the event log. Then the TVM presents those information to a remote verifier. Then the remote verifier may use its own endorsement, RIM, and the policy to verify if the TVM is trusted. In the figure, we use the item name underscore R to indicate the data for the remote verification. And that is different with the item used in local verification. Once the physical device is accepted, the TVM needs to verify the device interface. The device interface information is returned via TDSP protocol, which is a application protocol in SPDM secure session. The TDSP can return the device interface capability as well as the configuration. The configuration is known as the device interface report. The DSM manages the TDSP protocol on the device side. The TDS capability is usually a global static data. For example, what is the device address width? Which TDS commands are supported? Which, well, the interface report is a TDI specific dynamic data. For example, if the TDI allows the runtime device firmware update, if the PCI Express ATS or PIS is supported and enabled, if the MSRX capability message control register status is, and what is the signed MMIO range. The TVM gets those information via TDS protocol with the protection and the TSM. The TVM can verify it. If the TDI capability is accepted, then the TVM can check the TDI report to ensure the data is correct set by the VMM such as a MMIO range. Uh, in the last section, we will discuss the implementation. In Intel TDX, the TVM means the Linux Guest OS. The TSM is a TDX module as a policy enforcer, and the KVM is the re resource manager for all devices. And this table shows the data need to be verified by the TVM. From the high level, there are two categories of data. One is a physical device related data, which is transferred via SPDM protocol. And the other is device interface related data, which is transferred via TDSP protocol. The device identity information is the X.59 certificate chain. It is transferred via SPDM get certificate Command. The device measurement may include the measurement of the ROM, firmware code, hardware configuration, firmware configuration, device debug state, device boot mode, version, secure version number, etc. This information is transferred by SPDM get measurement command. The device also returns the SPDM capability. For example, if the device can return a fresh measurement or static measurement, it is from the SPDM get capability. Last but not least, when VMM launched the TSM to set up the SPDM session, the VMM can indicate some session policies. For example, what if the session 
termination policy for the runtime firmware update. This SPDM policy information should also be sent to the TVM for verification. The device interface capability includes the supported TDS per command list, the device interface lock flags, the device address widths, etc. This is from the TDS per capability command. The TDS per interface report includes multiple dynamic information. The TDI configuration capability from the device, for example, if the memory attribute is updatable. The configuration setting from the VMM. For example, if the runtime firmware update is supported, or the runtime setting from VMM, for example, what is the MMIO range address. In Linux, there are multiple ways to verify the data. For example, the verification code could build into the TVM directly. The verification code could be based on some policy, and the policy data could be static between the TVM or dynamic input at runtime. For example, the SPDM root certificate, the SPDM device reference integrity manifest should be the policy data. They should be determined by the tenant user, while the TDS MMI range verification should be the code and the kernel driver should check no overlap and accept the MMI range to the VMM. Also, the verification could happen in kernel or user space. As we discussed before, the TDS MMI check should be in a kernel, while the device attestation better be in a user space, since the certificate verification or device measurement match according to the policy. Finally, we will show the device initialization flow as an example. The box without border means the existing steps, and the box with blue border means the TE device related steps, and the box with red border means the TEIO device related, in which the dark green means the steps in TSM, not TVM. So, first, the VMM can inject the PCR hierarchy to a guest. Once the TCI device is found by the TVM, it goes through the PCI device filter. The tenant user is allowed to set up a forbidden device list, and those devices are not allowed. If the device is allowed, the device can check, uh, the, the driver can check if it is a TEIO device. If it is, then the TVM gets the device information from the TSM. For example, the SPDM certificate or measurement via SPDM protocol, the device interface report via TDS protocol, then the driver will perform local attestation to verify the SPDM certificate and the measurement according to the policy. It also verifies the TDI interface report. If everything is okay, the TVM can accept this device as a TEIO trusted device. If the device is not TEIO device, the TVM may continue the check if the TE device. Since the TVM may transfer the confidential data to the TE device, the TVM also needs to perform device attestation for the device, then accept the, 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 the TE device. Last, if the device is a, neither a TEIO device nor a TE device, then it is just a normal untrusted device. The TVM should not transfer any confidential data to the device. Once the device type is determined, the, the driver can continue uh, the, the device prop process. To summarize our talk, a device in a TVM can be untrusted a device, TEE device, or a TEIO device. And the TVM needs to perform device attestation for the TE device and the TEIO device before using, because this device needs to access the TVM confidential data. The standard body defines SPDM protocol and TDSP protocol, and they can be used to manage the TEIO device. It is important that Linux Guest kernel and the KVM and such infrastructure support. And tomorrow, John will talk the device IO in a trusted execution environment with more detail. 
And here is a link of the standard related to our talk, uh, like SPDM, Secure SPDM, PCI, related DOE, CMA, IDE, TDSP, or some nice uh, related information. And thank you very much for your time.